welcome. The show is in honor of. It's a show where we, we bring information to veterans and their families and interested people from the public uh, about what's going on in the world of veterans. Uh, and God knows we've got a lot of veterans out there that we have to take care of, and we try and get as much information as possible. Now, along that vein, uh, I want to welcome our guests today. Uh, first of all, we have the, the director of the VA... Uh, VA New York Harbor Healthcare System, that's right. Martina Peruta. Martina. Uh, we have Mary Lamana McClune <laughs> and her husband, Dennis McClune, <laughs> who have been with us any number of times. And of course, uh, my co-host, uh, Paul Dietrich, who's managed to make this continue going on for six years. He, he manages to get all the guests. I don't know if it's intimidation or what have you, but... Uh, coercion. Coercion. Okay. Martina, we'd like to, I guess, to open up and uh, think. Generally, what services are provided in each of the three campuses? And maybe you can explain to us, and you just explained to me before we went on air, uh, three campuses, but you actually cover four boroughs. Correct. Uh, so as director of VA New York Harbor Healthcare, I'm responsible for four out of the five boroughs in New York City, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. And so within those four boroughs are three major facilities, the medical center in Brooklyn, the medical center in Manhattan, and then what we call a community living center, which the community in general we would refer to as a nursing home at St. Albans. But in addition to that, we have community-based health care centers. There's one here in Staten Island on South Avenue, and there's one in Harlem on West 125th Street, trying to reach out to veterans, not only in all of the boroughs, but also somewhat closer to home whenever possible. Very good. So suppose you're a patient on Staten Island. Can you decide to go to any of the campuses that they would prefer? Or are there specialized services at specialized campuses? So any veteran can go to any VA facility at which he or she feels most comfortable. Um, and within New York Harbor, each campus has its own specialty, so to speak. So I'll explain briefly what you can find at each of the three main campuses. At Brooklyn, there is medical and surgical and all the specialties for the most part that are there, except for the very high end, and I'll get into that. There's also psychiatric services at the Brooklyn campus. Lots of outpatient specialty care available at the Brooklyn campus. And in addition, Brooklyn has something that neither Manhattan or St. Albans has, and that's what we call substance abuse recovery Yes. Uh, and restoration, and that really has to do with helping veterans who are recovering from alcohol or drug abuse and really need help getting back into society, yes. whether finding a job, finding housing, <clears throat> whatever it might be. So all of that is at our Brooklyn campus. And I've dealt with that because I'm a, a mentor at the, the treatment court here mm -hmm. on Staten Island on the Veterans Court. So. At our Manhattan campus, it's considered tertiary care, very high-end care. So it has the medicine and surgery that Brooklyn has, but in addition, Manhattan serves as a regional referral center for the VA facilities in New York and New Jersey for any cardiac surgery or neurosurgery, anything having to do with high-end cardiac care. For example, if you need a stent put in, that's done at Manhattan for veterans within our tri-state area, for lack of a better term. Okay. So if you're in Hudson Valley up at Castle Point, you'd go to Manhattan for your cardiac advanced care. If you're in East Orange, New Jersey, you go to Manhattan. Northport, same thing. So it's really VA centralizing mm -hmm. very high-end complex procedures so that the veteran gets the best care. Sure, it's because the you most have your most experienced staff. people there doing Correct, those. Correct, because they're doing at least one a day. Sure. So it's, you know, practice makes perfect kind of concept. Sure. That's true within medicine. So you have the high-end surgical team. Um, in Brooklyn, radiation therapy is available. It's not available at Manhattan. So if you're a cancer patient and you need chemotherapy, you can get that at either Brooklyn or Manhattan. But if the physician says you need radiation therapy, 
That is only available within New York Harbor at our Brooklyn site. We have two linear accelerators. They're expensive pieces yep. of equipment, but we have state-of-the-art facilities there specific for radiation therapy. So across New York Harbor, there's a full continuum of care. And at St. Albans, it's the long-term care mission. That's where the nursing home is, 142-bed nursing home, community living center. Manhattan and Brooklyn doesn't have that. Yep. They refer out to St. Albans. And in addition, St. Albans has outpatient care. Many people mm -hmm. forget that St. Albans offers outpatient care. About 6,500 veterans each year use St. Albans just for their outpatient care. So it's not just Manhattan and Brooklyn that has the outpatient care, so does St. Albans. And St. Albans is perfect for that long-term care mission because it's on 54 acres. And who in New York City has 54 acres of land? Yeah, nobody. The VA does. Yeah. Uh, and it's geared for veterans and veterans only. So in addition to the three main campuses, as I mentioned earlier, we do have two outpatient centers, one in Staten Island on South Avenue, and about 2,500 veterans use South Avenue Clinic for their care. So what we try to do is gear our services at each site based on the veteran population in that area. And for the diabetic veteran, having your annual foot and eye exam is key yep. to continued health. And we found at Staten Island, there was more and more demand for eye and podiatry mm -hmm. services, so we put them in. So we're always looking at what the veteran population in the area needs and expands accordingly. So across New York Harbor, you can get very high-end complex surgical care all the way to spending your final days in a nursing home if absolutely necessary. And one of the things I want to underscore, within VA across the country, we would prefer not to have to put a veteran in a nursing home. If a veteran can live safely at home with home health aides or services, that's what VA prefers. But we also recognize that there are members of the veteran population who don't necessarily have the family support or have an appropriate home for their current condition. That's where VA steps up to the plate and says, we have community living centers. Thank you. Very good. Martina, um, in the veterans community, uh, rumors tend to run wild every now and then. Uh, Just like in the service. Yep. <laughs> on the Brooklyn campus, is there any plans on closing departments or cutting back services, cutting back staff, anything like that? that that's, this is something that we've been hearing, yep. and uh, I've been telling them that none of it has been substantiated. All right, and thank you for the question. I'm hearing it too. I really want to put the rumors to bed on this. We are not closing clinics or beds at Brooklyn. Um, there was a lot of noise about ENT clinic closing. That never happened. We had no plans ever to close it. Did our doctors in ENT decide to leave VA? Yes, that's true. But we in turn hired doctors and nurse practitioners to take the place in the ENT clinic wasn't closed and it's open now. So if someone needs an appointment at Brooklyn for ENT, it certainly is available. So there's a lot going on on um, MRI. If you need an MRI, we've always had the MRI at Brooklyn. Recently, completely broke, was no longer able to be rehabbed. Um, so we made the decision we were going to get a brand new MRI. We had already ordered it but we wanted to put it in the proper place on the Brooklyn campus, that will require construction. So it'll sure. probably be another year before the brand new one is in place. However, in the interim, we have leased a trailer. You can lease MRI trailers, mm -hmm. and so it should be rolling onto the Brooklyn campus sometime in September of this year. I know it's inconvenient right now. Some veterans who need an MRI soon are being referred to the Manhattan campus for that. And I understand it can be a hardship, but we want to make sure the veteran gets timely care. And, and I thank them for understanding why we do that. But once again, having the full continuum of care across the four boroughs really helps the veteran get everything he or she might need within the four walls of VA. Very good. And of course, the, the rumor going around that, because most of us have heard it, 
is that it's a great location there on the water, and it would make great condominiums. And, and that, of course, is the, the rumor going around the, the veteran community. And by your, your discussion so far, I think we can infer that there's no plans to convert this into condos in the, in the near future. A absolutely. Not even the far future, to my knowledge. <laughs> absolutely not. VA owns the land. Yep. Um, the Fort Hamilton Army Base is adjacent to us, so it really would have to be a full swing federal um, initiative. And there's been no talk other than rumors in the community. Okay. Within VA headquarters, absolutely not. It's not even being considered. It's all about providing care for the veteran at that site. Has the relationship with uh, SUNY Downstate uh, changed? We have a good relationship, a very good relationship. Uh, for those in the community who may not realize, we get residents from SUNY Downstate, so it's medicine and surgery, uh, who are training. Uh, they're doctors, but they're in their training years. And so we have that connection with SUNY Downstate. I think one of the reasons that rumor may have started was ENT Clinic was residents from SUNY Downstate and the attending physicians, the senior physicians, were part of SUNY Downstate. Uh, the chairman made the decision uh, to pull out a VA for whatever SUNY's reasons are. Subsequently, I've met with um, people at SUNY Downstate, and they've assured us they have absolutely no plans on pulling anything else out of VA, and in fact, they're working with us on making some key recruitments in some physician vacancies that we have. So I consider our relationship with SUNY very strong. Very good. Yeah. We've talked a little bit about some of the uh, expansions you're planning or some of the changes you're mm -hmm. planning that will add additional services. Uh, one of the big issues that comes up, and for myself, for example, to get to Brooklyn is an issue. It is an absolute issue that transportation is terrible. The parking is not the best in the world. If I have an appointment in Brooklyn, I will always schedule it as, as very early in the morning simply because there's usually a parking spot. Are there any plans to expand the parking lot system? To be perfectly honest, if you live on Staten Island, you have no option other than car. There is nothing else available to us to get us there. There's no subways. We're stuck. And if you have to get to Manhattan, it's even worse. To be honest, for me to get to Manhattan, when I have to go there, it takes me an hour and a half. And I've got to go by bus, by ferry, and by train on the other side. It's a phenomenal problem. That's on a good day. That's on a good day. So the parking lot is essential to those of us from Richmond County at there. And there's sometimes you can get a spot, sometimes you can't. Yes, there are plans actually. And, and it's not just Richmond County that has a problem okay. with parking. I think it's anyone who chooses to use the Brooklyn VA. It's an insatiable demand, um, and I recognize that. We're constantly restriping, trying to eke out a few more spots, but there is an old building on the Brooklyn site, Building 3, has not been used for years. Uh, it's not even able to be rehabilitated, so the decision was made to actually raise the building, and it will be torn down sometime during the next six to eight months. We are on track to have it torn down. Once it is torn down, we will be putting in additional parking spots. We're hoping to maximize. Right now, they tell me it'll be 40 to 50 spots. I said, we need to look long and hard about how we can maximize it even more because I know it'll be filled up in no time. Yeah. One of the things that we had requested, and I don't think it'll be funded anytime soon, is a parking deck. Does it make sense to put a parking deck on the grounds? Clinical needs overcome yep. parking decks, and so I can't see it happening, but it doesn't mean we're not constantly looking at new spots. Um, I can't help you with the public transportation growth. <laughs> I'll just uh, however, I will try to get you new spots or additional if, spots. If I might add to that, is that uh, we have a, a normal size car, a, a, small SUV, uh, the spots in the back, that when you uh, tried to gain more spots and you made them smaller, you, 
we have gone there and Mary has had to climb in over the back seat in order to get to the front seat because you can't open up your door if somebody parks in Got a it. spot right next to you. Okay. So, so the spots are really, we'll, really we'll narrow. We'll have to trial it before we actually strike mm. it. Mm. Anytime you want to jump in also, Mary. Uh -huh. No, I was just thinking, that's about the only time Dennis lets me drive. Oh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I can't help you there, Mary. No. <laughs> <laughs> Being told that there's an increasing emphasis on telehealth. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what is telehealth? How does the average veteran access using it? And Give us a, an overview, please. So telehealth is a big initiative, not only in VA, but in all of healthcare. And the concept is if you don't have to leave your home, uh, if you don't have to travel from Staten Island or Brooklyn, um, yep. we could help alleviate that by hooking you up via television, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of ways that telehealth can be used. For many veterans, they can benefit by going to their primary care doctor. So if you need to have your weight checked regularly, daily, weekly, and, and some conditions like congestive heart failure fall into that category, you need to have your blood pressure checked because it tends to run high. You don't have to come in. We can issue you the scale, the blood pressure cuff, and through telehealth, a nurse can check in with you. Uh, and there are things that we can give the veteran to bring home and train the veteran. And as technology gets better and better, we're getting to the point where we'll be able to Skype the veteran into the nurse and save the veteran the trip in. So for some, what we would consider basic health needs, we can readily do it because for many veterans, it's key to maintaining a quality life. You could go to Staten Island Clinic and what they call CBT or store and forward. Um, they'll take the picture there, send it to the dermatologist in Brooklyn who will read it and get back to your primary care or to you directly on it to save you the trip. The other thing that VA Nationwide is doing, and we in New York Harbor participate in it, because we in New York City can find just about any type of physician you may need. We have every specialty available mm -hmm. to us, et cetera. If we don't have it, we can recruit it. So other parts of the country, especially rural parts of the United States, have difficulty recruiting specialties, psychiatrists, dermatologists. So they look to the big cities to find them for us. Not that the doctor's moving out there, but rather through telehealth. The doctor is in New York City at the VA or at another location and literally beams up the patient face to face, can have a session. Um, let's use tel uh, telepsychiatry or telemental health as an example. You can have a 45 minute session with your provider, psychologist, psychiatrist, you could be in one location, and I'll use the example, you could be in Manhattan as the doctor, and the patient could be in Iowa City, Iowa. And we do that because they cannot find them for the veterans out there. So telehealth has all different kinds of levels. Sure. It's growing, as I said, in the private sector. It certainly is growing in VA since we are the largest healthcare system in the United States and can tap into each other's resources. So really what VA is saying, Let's match the supply with the demand. Sure. And there's demands in other parts of the country for certain specialists. Big cities tend to have the supply of the providers. We start marrying them up. We in New York Harbor are actually a national telemental health hub, meaning that resources are specifically given to us to recruit psychiatrists and psychologists for other parts of the country for rural America. And we've done that and are very, very successful. If I may add to that, um, uh, with the telehealth, uh, we've observed it during our visits to several of the uh, VA facilities. Uh, it's also utilized for patient teaching. Uh, we were at one facility and there was actually a group of veterans who were getting diabetic teaching. There was about 10 of them. And uh, after the presentation with the telehealth, I spoke with some of them and they were very appreciative because number one, they weren't by themselves. They were dialoguing with each other that, you know, I, 
I have the same problems you have. And then when the physician or the nurse was doing the, the uh, education, they all learned and they found it very, very effective. Um, and again, it kept the community of veterans together, which is really a big part, you know, in the VA system. You talked a little bit about the uh, Justice Outreach Center. Mm -hmm. Can you expand on that? And again, as, as, as I said, I know the, in, the interrelationship as, as a mentor in the, in the Veterans Court. And for people that don't understand that system, uh, the court actually refers as part of the sentencing the veteran to the VA for specific treatment and then monitors that as a part of the conditions of the, the court uh, decree. So uh, can you go into some of the details sure. of that? Sure, and I'm sure you'll correct me if I misspeak. No. no. <laughs> so, no, I certainly do. So, Veterans Justice Outreach Program, as it's known nationally, VJO, started in the Buffalo, yes, uh, New York area. And the concept was the court system was seeing more and more veterans coming through with misdemeanors, um, many of it related to substance abuse of yeah. some sort. And the judge said, What are we doing? These are our nation's veterans. Why are we putting, putting them, them behind bars? Let's work with them and see how we can get them back into society and actually help them with their disease rather than punish them for their disease. So it started in Buffalo and quickly grew across all of the VA. So we here in New York City, each of the five boroughs yes. has a Veterans Justice Outreach Program and works directly with the state courts in their respective boroughs. So um, actually Queens was the first borough uh, to get off the ground, followed by Brooklyn. I've been at each of the four boroughs from which I am responsible, working with the judges and with the veterans there. And there are some really heartwarming stories when you talk to veterans. The court system could not be more appreciative of VA's willingness to work with the court system throughout the city because what they're seeing is their docket is getting a little bit more manageable because VA is trying to work with the veteran. Um, I'm not going to say every veteran is willing uh, yep. to do so, but we have a very high success rate. And in fact, I have two full-time employees or social workers. Their job is to be in the New York State court system working with those veterans. They're there on their hearing dates, they're working with counselors to get them into treatment. And oftentimes, unfortunately, you find that they're unemployed and homeless. Yep. And so we pull in our homeless experts. We work with um, various employers to help the veterans find work. And ultimately, we want to make sure that they're able to stay clean and find their way back into society. I'm not yep. going to say it's always successful but i have it's to much tell higher you than the regular rate i of, agree with you paul absolutely because working with the judges themselves has made a world of sure. difference and all of the judges involved in that court are veterans yes, yes. so we can talk as veterans yeah, and, yes. and a point i'd like to make is uh and i see it firsthand here uh one of our employees here in the studio terry is a, mentor. a mentor and i have seen remarkable things from him that he actually has a good feeling about all of this and the people that he mentors that he helps in the court system constantly reaching out to mm -hmm. him just yes. to talk the lifeline yes a lifeline yes. and and he looks like it's very important to him yes it it's is. very important to him to be able to help people this way and to help veterans uh, a fellow veteran uh, this way. I agree, because I see it. Some of my employees uh, across New York Harbor are mentors as well in the different boroughs. And when I talk with them, they truly feel a sense of accomplishment that they're helping their fellow uh, mm -hmm. veteran really in any way that they can. Yes, I was very happy when my, my veteran graduated. There you go. We actually he have the graduating the ceremonies. Yes, we yes. do. And yep. they have a ceremony and they present them with a certificate. So. 
Um, we're starting to run out of time, but real quick, the VITAL program, can you explain that to us? Sure. The, the VITAL program is VA working with veterans who are on the GI Bill mm -hmm. to get their education. So we have two people in New York Harbor who spend their time in the colleges and universities throughout New York City working with veterans who have enrolled through the college or technical school using the GI Bill benefits but often aren't aware of their health care benefits in VA. They don't need to use student health. They have VA, and many of them are not aware of that. Um, many of them are so focused on getting their education that they overlook perhaps some of their health needs. So we want to be able to say to them, we're here for you. Actually, one of the uses we have of telehealth is to some of the colleges and universities because for a student, it can be difficult sometimes sure. yeah. to get to an appointment elsewhere, especially depending upon where the VA is in the school. So the VITAL program out in the community marries academic leadership, and that's the AL and VITAL, with veterans' health care and says, okay, don't overlook the full scope of your life. We know you want to get a job through your education, but we also know you need to be healthy. And so VITAL brings that together. That's beautiful. Well, you've brought a wealth of information to us, and I'm going to ask you if you can come back because Absolutely. we sure. haven't touched the tip of the iceberg even yet. There's so much more to go. Only if Mary and Dennis agree to come. Absolutely. Oh, uh, well, and and Absolutely. I want to I thank Mary and Dennis yeah. for being here. Mary and Dennis have been such an integral part of this programming that we do uh, that we look forward to being together with them. And Dennis, tell us real briefly about the ceremony uh, September 23rd. Yes, uh, the only uh, POW MIA ceremony on Staten Island uh, is uh, uh, done by the Vietnam Veterans of America, a Thomas J. Torrey chapter. And the ceremony this year, unlike years past, will be at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we've uh, had sometimes uh, uh, problems with the heat and what have you, so we decided to put it off to an, uh, a later time, and hopefully uh, the uh, honor guard that performs the ceremony won't be affected by the uh, temperatures. So it's at the Manor Road and Martling Avenue Vietnam Veterans Memorial, right outside the armory, 6.30 p.m. on Sunday, September 23rd, 2018, and uh, we always have that ceremony on the Sunday following the third Friday, mm -hmm. uh, which is always the annual POWMIA day federally. So it's always the Sunday following the third Friday. Very good. Well, you've been watching in honor of, I want to thank my guests, uh, Martina, Mary, Dennis, uh, and of course my co-host, uh, Paul Dietrich, who, who really makes this work. He, I mean, it's, it's his behind the scenes that he gets all the guests and makes everything happen. So there thank you. Behind the scenes. That's right. Uh, you just I keep... thought it was a slow moving tennis match here. I was going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just keep watching in honor of. We love you for watching. We will continue to bring you vital information that's important to the life and the livelihood of all veterans. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. We love you. Thank you.